Hey, coming out. Hey, Kendra. This is your husband, right, girl? <laughs> yes, how are you doing? Yes, yeah, listen. Now, tell the people that don't know the story that you guys got married last year, but y'all met from my show. Yeah. Yes, we did. We did. Okay, so before, okay, I want to start from the beginning, then I want to ask you about marriage life. Some people are watching for the first time. So where your husband at? Right here. All right. Okay. Hey. All right. Tell the good people how you what you did to meet your wife. Say that again. Tell the good people what happened. You came on my show. I want you to tell the story. Okay, I came on your show. Uh, it was like it was a a pop up show. Came on your show. Uh, when was the pop up show? I can't remember. It was back in May. Back in May, it was a pop up show. I came on. May of what year? Twenty two. 22. Okay. And pop-up show. Really, I was on there because of a bit with my son. And uh, you started asking me the questions that you normally ask. And I told you what I was looking for. I'm looking for a godly woman. Not just a woman that say, you know, that she, she, she believes in God, but I wanted someone that was really serving God. You know, someone really devoted to God. That's what I was looking for. And uh, had a nice response, you know, from women and everything. But when me and her talk, it was, the conversation was just totally different, you know. Uh, strictly about God. It wasn't about, you know, sex and partying and all of that. It was God and family, you know. And that's what really attracted me to her. I love it. And then... You guys got married when? August the 5th. Put the phone back on you, girl. I'm sorry. August 5th. August the, the, you a whole wife, I'm girl. A whole wife. Now, how old are you, honey? I am 44. 40? I, I love this. I love this for so many reasons. I love that you guys are proving that, yes, you can still get married in your 40s. You can feel, still find someone in your 40s. So y'all been married for now. For how many months has it been? Seven. Okay, how, how was marriage life? Uh, ah, you... both <laughs> well, does any other normal marriage? Um, you have to remember we did we courted for long distance, so it's just normal, I mean, you know, of getting to know one another more as far as you know, we had our conversation. We had, you have to ask hard questions. Yeah. We're still learning one another because we did court it one uh, whole long distance. But, you know, it's like any other marriage. I get mad at him. He get mad at me. But, hey, we kiss makeup and going about our business. It's just like any other marriage. Yes. A marriage is just you, you deciding that you're going to forgive somebody for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Because you're constantly gonna go through things like you know in relationships you know non-married people we sit in the seat of oh you made me upset deuces that's not how not, that's not how real marriages are supposed to be something happens through the hard times you figure it out but that's just when that happens but most of the time the great thing about marriage is you have a partner for life yeah. i yeah. love this now where are you guys based because i missed the wedding but i feel like i have to meet you guys in person we're in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, that's not far. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. No. Because I missed the wedding. But I'm going to plan. Like, this is, and I'm saying this live on my show. I'm going to come to Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm going to meet you guys in person. Okay. And I, I, actually, and, and I need, and, and shout out to Susan, the psychic, who is my psychic. She lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and she's been inviting me. So I can kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> <laughs> so, and now I live in LA, and I know. Like mm -hmm. driving distance is not a lot. Girl ain't driving though. She's gonna fly. Um, so <laughs> the flight can't be that long. So I really want to plan this. I really want to plan this. Um, oh God. If I wasn't busy on Valentine's Day, I would do it then. But you know, I got a boo, child. I'm gonna be busy on Valentine's Day. Well, that would be win it out. Huh? that would be the week of his birthday too. So that, Valentine's Day is your birthday's that week. His birthday is on the 16th. Are y'all like doing a party or something? Not, not yet. We haven't, I haven't made any plans yet. Okay, well, maybe that weekend. Okay. Yeah, maybe 
lady that worked. I'm, I'm doing this for sure because I have to meet you guys in person. Because I, I, I take it is this is why I created my show. I created my show for people to be connected and hopefully find the ultimate, which is a person you can actually marry. And now, um, where did you move from? Because you live in Phoenix, but you didn't live in Phoenix, right? No, I was in Houston. So you relocated to Phoenix for her. Yes. You were able to do that with your job. I found another job here. When you find your wife, you find another job. Stop <laughs> saying. This job, this job, in the, this the wrong job because my wife ain't in this city. So this is the wrong job. I'm gonna get me my job in Phoenix where my wife is. Now yeah. I'm just curious. What did it make more sense for you to move to her opposed to the opposite? Yeah. You know what? One while she was, we was talking about her coming to Houston, mm -hmm. you know, but after I thought about it for a while, I wanted to get away from Texas for a while anyway. Okay. So it just, it just made better sense for me. Hey, you know what? You stay there. I'm coming. How old, how old are you again? I'm 50. 50. Okay. Now, do you both have kids or not? Yes. How many yes. kids did you have, sweetheart? Two. Two and two boys. Sir? Two. Oh, okay. And what was the kids' age? What are your kids' age? The oldest. So we have 15, 14, 13, 9. Oh, so they all live in the house? Yes. Wow, I love this. So they all, so your kids move with you? What yes. Do you oh, you yes. have full custody of your children? Yes. Oh. So that, I mean, so in choosing your wife, I'm quite sure that was one of your considerations. Yeah, of course it was. Of course it was, because I seen how she was, even though it was long distance, uh, we was always, face since day one, just about, we FaceTimed each other, mm -hmm. you know? So I got to see how she was with her family. She got to see how I was with my family. It wasn't no faking just because we're on camera. Mm -hmm. We got mad at each other over the phone. Sometimes mm -hmm. now we still, that's what I want to tell people. Sometimes you got to quit looking at relationships on the social media when they show all this relationship gold and everybody be happy and okey door. It's not like that all the time. Of course I love, love her. She loves me. But sometimes we get mad at each other. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's about making up. Hey, hey, well, let me see what I was wrong. I told her the other day I was mad at her. Hey, you know what? I apologize. <laughs> I seen where I was wrong. And a lot of times, Men and women don't want to do that. Nobody want to take the less of the win and to make sure the relationship stay intact. So, yeah. Listen, I was saying this recently, like, for the people that I know that are married, you're right. The wedding day is just the celebration day, but it's so small compared to what a marriage really is. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people prepare for the for the wedding, but don't do enough preparing for the, for the marriage. So, what was... I want y'all both to give advice. So more so, I want you, like you already kind of talked about how she was different and she was all about God. But for people who are watching my show, I think this is the ultimate desire, which is marriage. What advice would you give from a woman's perspective as a wife? And then I want you to do so too as a husband. Okay, for a wife perspective, um, I'm just going to say me. What I was looking for it was just, a God-fearing man. Just not just a man to say he go to church, but he had to really love God and put God the oh, focus. Oh, yeah. That, Kendra, you know something? He did not tell me he was a minister. <laughs> but you know something? It's funny how God works things out, though, because I am a PK kid, and, and it's just how God God works things out. If you really pray and you really seek God and allow God to handle it, God will work it out in your favor. He will work things out in your favor. He will give you your desires of your heart, but you got to wait on him. You cannot do things yourself. You cannot write it out for yourself. You have to allow God to work it out and to make it for you just for you sometimes it might not seem easy so I, I swear there was times that i sat and i cried in my bedroom because i was tired of being hurt being tired of being used i worked i took a year off to, almost two years off before i even started talking with sebastian before i even inboxed him 
I took a year off and got to know me and start evaluating myself. I'm um, improving myself and loving myself for who I was. So all I can say is wait on God and the whole perspective is just keep waiting on God, you know. And I can't say that I can't say that enough. You literally, if you really want a God fearing man, if you really want somebody to love you for you, you have to wait on God and you have to allow yourself to heal and not take baggage into your relationship because when you take baggage into the relationship you're going to continue to get the same results every single time every single time you continue to do the same thing and to carry on the same thing you're going to always if you want a man that got a six-figure job you might not always get you god might not want you to have a man that got a six-figure job a six-figure uh job he might not want that but he will take care of you the small things is what counts it's not the big things it's the small things that count and that's why i have to say okay <laughs> do you remember we was at church i was on but like do we gotta do an offering now should we take it to a collective play <laughs> See, they used to, oh, I know they be doing cash app and sales in church now too, child. Yeah. Like say, you, we take all money, checks, cash app, Zell. Oh, okay, love Sebastian. <laughs> now, have, have, have either of you two been married before? Yes. Okay. But yes, I, I, was, I, I was previously married for just 23 okay. years. 20, okay. Yeah. All right. And then you got, okay. And then, okay. So now this is your second wife. Yes. Okay. All right. And men who say they want wives. What advice would you give to men? Because I say men, men say they say they want wise child, and they say that the the world is at their oasis, but some of them don't be husbands, child. Okay. What I would say to men is this: number one, make sure that you are healed. Number one, yourself from your past hurts, your past disappointments, uh, past failures. Make sure that you are healed. Number two, make sure that you have, uh, that you are able to lead as a husband. You know, just carrying the title, I'm a husband, but you're not able to lead. If you can't be disciplined with yourself, you're not going to be disciplined as a husband and being able to lead that woman. You, and leading don't mean all the time that you just throwing out rules and everything. You have to be partaker of what you uh, say so you lead, you got to cast a vision. And God put men in that position. God gave the responsibility to Adam first. He never gave the responsibility to Eve. Adam had the responsibility. So men are responsibility holders. They're, they're supposed to be vision casting for their family, setting their family on a vision, and this is the way that we're going. That's men uh, 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 department to do that. Number three, I would say be patient. You have to be patient with the uh, the woman that you say uh, that you, that, hey, I want her to be my wife. Because I tell you what, you get married, a year from now, she's not going to be that same woman. Five years from now, she's not going to be that woman that you married a year. Uh, that was in the first year. Ten years from now, she's going to be a different woman. By the time through your lifespan, she might be four different women in that lifespan. <laughs> And you got to get to know each one of them because you grow as an individual. So where we're starting out now, I know that, hey, five years from now, she's going to be grown from this. She's not going to be the same woman. So, man, you have to study your woman. You have, I love to, her. You have to sit there. You got to study her behavior, study her mood swings, study her language. Sometimes I just sit and I just look at her. And she'll be looking, what you looking at? I'll be like, nothing. I'm just looking. <laughs> I'm studying. And sometimes men don't want to take that time and effort. Sometimes men, and I know I'm going to get a lot of flack on this, but you know what? I done lost the fear of people. I'm not scared of, I'm, I'm fear of people don't bother me. Sometimes we so focused on the outward appearance to what's mm -hmm. on the inside really don't matter to us. Mm -hmm. Long as, hey, she looked this way or he looked this way, this what I want. And that person could be the very opposite of what you're desiring, you know? So you got to be careful in that, you know? So I, that that would be my advice, and especially to the ones that say they want a guard fair man, 
I would say this. Are you serious about that? You got to be serious about it. Because a God-fearing man, someone that, a man that takes God serious, he's going to have a prayer life. He's going to have a study life. Yeah. God is going to be first in his life. And you're going to see that. And there's some things that he's just not going to settle for, for because God is the standard. My wife, wife know, she knows that God is the standard. Yeah. Now, am I saying I'm perfect? No, I'm not perfect. I'm far from, I think I'd have made more mistakes than anybody in the world. But I recognize God and this is, the, he's the standard. Christ is the standard. Hey, if I repent and continue to strive for him, it'll be all right. So men, you can do it. It's just what you want to do. You hear me? I love it. Listen, I enjoy this so much. Day. He came on my show in 2022. So, and then, okay, Tamir, you DM'd him, right? I I did. Okay, so she he came on the show and she DM'd him and child she a whole wife now. And last they got married last year, so we got married a year later. They, yeah, they got married a year later. Okay, so I want to come to Phoenix, Arizona. I need to meet you guys in person. We're gonna do dinner, Tamara. We got the we DM me. We're gonna make this happen for sure because the wedding. Girl, I think I didn't get a reminder. Something happened with the wedding. I think the day of, I remember, but obviously it was too late because I was in L.A. But then I moved. A lot happened last year. I moved from Chicago to L.A., so my life was, I had to get acclimated. But not for sure, because Phoenix, Arizona is not from L.A. I'm coming to meet y'all in person. That okay. is a fact. Okay. That is a fact. And we're going to plan it out. Thank y'all for coming on the show. Look, this is a pop-up show. You came on, you, you must be good luck on pop-up shows, Sebastian. <laughs> Because you, you came know, up I, on a pop-up show. <laughs> now nah, I did a pop-up show right now. You came back on. So. You know what? I love y'all. Kendra, so can I address one thing before yeah. you go? I see somebody make the comment talking about security. In other words, and I, to me, I took that as a little sly comment, somebody saying security. It is security. And you should want security in your relationship. I'm secure that when I leave my house, I ain't got to worry about another man coming in. Mm. She's secure about when she leaves her home, she ain't got to worry about another woman coming in. She's comfortable because I make her that way. So you want to say security? You're right. It is security. And guess what? It brings a peace of mind. You ought to try it. You heard me? <laughs> Woo! Don't, don't get Sebastian started. Don't, don't get Sebastian. <laughs> you know what, though? And I, I have learned this. And I mean, and I even spoke about this myself. I think a lot of people that watch my shows have um, dating trauma, right? And um, in my and in my own dating history in my past, I went through a lot of things. And in my current relationship, I have to be conscious to not let the things that my last guy did have me wondering about my new guy. Well, he's never did anything to make me even feel that way. So I agree with you. I think when you were talking about security, some people have never experienced that. They have right. never experienced being with a person that they fully trust. They've never been with a person that, let's say he didn't call you all day, you're not thinking, oh, he with another woman. Like, that's where most people's first thoughts um, go. But you are right. When you have a secure relationship, it's a peace of mind like no other. And, 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 you, and you will be not wondering nothing because, like you said, that person will make you feel secure. So you'll never have to be insecure and feeling insecure. Listen, I love this conversation. We got to go because they want to find love like y'all find love. So <laughs> um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, DM you, Tamir, on this because we have a thread, okay. right? Uh -huh. And we're going to make it happen. Like, I'm so serious. I want to come to Phoenix. And if I can do it for the birthday weekend, I'll make it happen. All right, then. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. That's your marriage life. <laughs> 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 Good night. Bye. I love that.